So Dr. Lewis is the, uh, he's the director of the International Association of Grace Ministries, which is a kind of loosely organized group of churches that love the Lord, love the lost, and love his word. Um, thank you. Uh, and we, uh, we're, we were blessed to have him, I think, the first year that we uh, came out here after a year of just simply struggling to, wondering why we were here. Dr. Lewis was the first uh, visitor we ever had. Not only has he traveled the whole world, he was in touch with all the various churches throughout the United States. And uh, he encouraged us to stick it out. And much of what you see here is, is the result of that, kind of like what we were sharing this morning. Uh, he was one of the first encouragers that we had out here. We were thankful for the relationship and friendship that we've had for all these years. Yeah, you know him well. He's been out here many times. But uh, right now, he's going to be speaking for us. So, Dr. Lewis, it's all yours. Okay, I guess I'm unmuted, right? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> it's good to see you, Pastor Todd, uh, out there in Italy. Wow, great. Great time we had a year and a half ago with Dan Yaw. <clears throat> I think Dan is Dan Yaw from Lakeland, Florida is tuning in today. Uh, we sent him a link and several others uh, of his supporters of IEGM. But wanted to uh, just uh, briefly speak this morning, uh, this afternoon uh, with you. Uh, <clears throat> so thankful for Pastor Powell having this conference and Pastor, Pastor Cornwall really putting it together. This takes a lot of work with all the technology and such and all the helpers that he has there. We certainly appreciate it. And we're just so good to, glad to be able to <laughs> come this time of year by at least, at least a virtual uh, conference there. We've been going there almost every year for over 12, 15 years, uh, at least uh, with, uh, with uh, Living Grace Ministry. So it's good. And I wanna thank uh, everyone who's been so praying and helpful. <clears throat> I wanted to just speak this morning, uh, this afternoon, excuse me, saying morning, it's just, it's afternoon here for us, but morning for you. The uh, last words that were on Jesus' lips before he ascended into heaven in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, he says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain of which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority is in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. And then in Acts 1.8, he said, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Those are the great, great uh, reality. That's our command. You know, during this COVID-19 thing, we had a great, a little bit of a transition. I think it's a greater one than ever before. And probably Pastor Powell has relayed some of it to you, but the end of May, we were at a place where we had to change our affiliation with NCLL is a very amicable uh, relationship. We didn't have, there's no, not, we just had to go on our own and our 501c3, which was originally uh, that that was in Tacoma was established in Washington state uh, was intact. And we actually elected nine, um, nine people to the uh, board of the, of the IHEM. You'll possibly, I think, be listening, hearing uh, from Jerry Graziano later on today, but he's the director of the board. He's located in Seneca Falls, New York, and he and his daughter and uh, several wonderful people who really have the same vision and really want to help and expand IAGM <clears throat> are on the board and we're going to see some tremendous changes happen. So that's happened and it's very plus, a great plus to all that, uh, that we, we, have, we have as a vision. Our desire, and, and I, you know, I want to just read quickly to you uh, in my few moments here, but I wanted to just read to you the list of missionaries that we have. It's, it's very interesting. We have even one missionary who is 
that the uttermost parts of the earth and that that uh, acts 1 8 when that's that's Chile. Chile is the farthest point from Jerusalem and uh, and that's uh, that we, we have one one like that but we have quite an international group. I want to just read them off quickly to you maybe you've seen these on the website but as we just had Todd and Christy Kincaid from Rome Italy then we have brother Mark who was in Italy also uh, from Europe and we uh, he's working with Pastor Todd and so forth. Then Trevor and Veronica Robinson from Bratislava. And I think you've heard from them. They were just there recently. Then there's Nina Novacek, which is, uh, she's from the Ukraine. And she works with the gypsies in the Ukraine. Then there's Josephus Holly in Tama, Ghana, West Africa. Unbelievable work of God uh, going on, putting uh, water filters in villages where there's no good water and by doing so being able to present the wa water, water of life and leading people to Christ. Then of course Emmanuel and Liz Saipeta who are in Dominican Republic who were in, in, uh, in uh, Tacoma for a number of years he was. Then we have Lenny, Lisa and, and Megan Williams who are in Lakeland, Florida. They have, they have a ministry to young people unbelievable things, one after another, every week, a complete uh, outreach to groups through churches all over central Florida, children that have just been abandoned and left. And so that, that's a tremendous ministry. They're located in uh, Lakeland, Florida. Then Jack and Janice Driscoll, and you know, many of you know them there in San Miguel, uh, Mexico, really a phenomenal work. Pastor Jim and his family have been there to visit. Then Dennis and Katya Ellis in Madisonville, Tennessee, they continue their Russian and Central American missions with, with Final Frontiers. They're a part of us. Then Fabian and Erica Lopez, I just interviewed them yesterday for a video that we're gonna be presenting to on uh, social media with the, with the country of Chile and the island of Chiloé. And then Adam and Diana Nathanson from Caracas, Venezuela. Uh, Joseph and, and Makaya Kio in Nampam, Cambodia. Uh, Wade and Paula Johnson in Bali, Indonesia. Ben and Ramona, Turkey in Jerusalem, Israel. Anila Zia, who was in Lahore, Pakistan. Phenomenal work this woman has done since the death of her husband. Continued on with that. Then Sergei and Nadia Satkanov in Nisnergasque, uh, Siberia. Then Andre and Elena Brezhnikov in, in two men, Siberia. And then also Andre and Masha, Masha, Masha Bay in Auckland, New, New Zealand. <laughs> so I would say that's quite, a, quite an expanse of just uh, international ministries as well as local that we've God has blessed us with. So the IEGM wants to continue to fulfill that vision and reach others in different countries throughout the world to make that possible, that they might also find, cry that the, the word of God would, would continue. It's interesting that uh, in, in contact with most of these missionaries, which I've communicated by either email, Zoom or Skype or whatever, uh, even with telephone calls, they're having the same difficulties in their country that they are here. You have the COVID-19 problem with everybody shut down, Food is very scarce, problems, all kinds of things. And one wonderful thing, and even though this is a tragic time, the wonderful thing is this, people are really looking for God. They're really looking for God. Why is this happening? What's gonna happen to us? What is the purpose of life? And so the reality is, as John 14 uh, verse six says, Jesus said, listen, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus is the only truth that fulfills it. Islam doesn't, uh, Confucianism doesn't, Hinduism doesn't, any of the Islams, is, isms of the world do not meet that need. And the beautiful thing here is this, is we, we haven't changed in our emphasis as in missions, but it's wonderful that in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse eight, it says this, we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth. And that's what's wonderful. Now, 
recognizing that it's difficult today for us to genuinely know what is the true and what is not true in this world with the many voices uh, that are vying for our attention. We have so many conspiracy theories that are going around that are multiplying so rapidly that it's so difficult for us to even weigh what is truly a trusted source of truth. It's really extremely difficult. Some people, you know, you say, well, I trust this network, I trust this source and such, but really is always a question <laughs> when men get involved with it and it's not, its foundation is questionable where the truth comes from. But we find that uh, Jesus said in John 8, 44, he said, you know, you are of your father, the devil, when he spoke to the Pharisees, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning. He does not stand in the truth. There's no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, in our understanding today, with all the questionable things that we're hearing, it's very understandable that we are so close to the time that 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3, 4, and 6 through 12 talk about the man of lawlessness is about ready to appear. Completely, absolutely no foundation whatsoever except himself coming directly from the devil, speaking lies, so much so that Matthew 24, verse 24 says that for false Christs and false prophets will rise and perform great signs and wonders, all as to lead astray, if possible, even the very alive, meaning you and I. So it's not, a, it's not a something that I can trust in, except what I hear clearly from the word of God. Now, I've heard your pastor in many of the messages online through the streaming from the, from the website. I've been listening to different ones uh, throughout on, on, on Facebook and different, con, uh, different sources. And you know what? There's nothing like the clarion sound of crystal clear truth being presented. And that is exactly what the world wants. I have a contact in, in Bombay, India that I'm in communication with almost every day. <clears throat> and he is he says it's unbelievable what's, what's going on, even in that country with all the Hinduism. People are seeking God like you wouldn't believe it. He's actually linked to certain people to my, my uh, Sunday morning and, and Wednesday night Bible studies that I have through Facebook Live on my page because they're just hungry and they're sending me questions. And I'm getting questions from all over the world about truth issues about truth issues. So this morning, uh, this evening, <laughs> this afternoon, anytime, whenever you're listening, uh, Pastor Todd's it's evening for him. So uh, the reality is, is that the truth of the word of God is the thing that stabilizes. Everything that I hear, every possibility I consider, and I'm not talking politics now, I'm just talking about all the voices that want to declare something as being the truth, but may or may not be the lie. The only qualifying reality that we have is the word of God. I can't express it anymore. The, and and the, uh, Living Grace Ministries and those that are in contact with IAGM, that's all of our purpose. We want to preach it in the pulpits in America, and we want to communicate it to the world. That's why uh, Jeremiah warned and he said, so many things, and actually Isaiah said it first, he said in Isaiah 28 verse 15, he says, and this is what's true of, and this is what Israel was listening to. He said, because you have said, we have made a covenant with death and with Shoal, we have an agreement. When the overwhelming whip passes through, it will not come to us for we have made lies our refuge. And of, in falsehood, we have taken shelter. I'm telling you, that is what is happening worldwide. In, a verse, in chapter 28, verse 17, God says that I will make justice the line and righteousness the plumb line. 
and hail will sweep away the refuge of lies and waters will overwhelm the shelter. God says there's a coming a time and it could be sooner than later when he's going to actually completely do away as that, that passage in 2 Thessalonians 2 says, the, all of the delusion and the lies of the devil will be, deceived, be destroyed and wiped away. Isn't that amazing? What a promise from God today. So God, we find that uh, Jeremiah says that, that in, verse, in chapter 7, verse 28, he says, This is the nation whose people will not obey the Lord their God and who refuse to be taught. Truth has vanished from among them. It's no longer heard on their lips. Unfortunately, that's probably more accurate than you can imagine today. Uh, we find in Isaiah 59, verse 14, it says, Our courts oppose the righteous, the justice is nowhere to be found, truth stumbles in the streets, and honesty has been outlawed. And then in verse 15 of chapter 59 of Isaiah, yes, truth is gone, and anyone who renounces evil is attacked. The Lord looked and was displeased to find that there was no justice. You see, I've been teaching in the book of Isaiah, and the book of Isaiah is such a mission, mission-minded book, because in it it speaks about the fact that that uh, there came a point when all of a sudden God's patience and His long suffering and His endurance ran out. He decided, "There's just no one. No one's going to listen to me." And we find it's a very interesting thing. Uh, we find in Jeremiah five verse. 1 and 3, Jeremiah said this, run up and down every street in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Look high and low, search through the city. If you can find even one just and honest person, I will not destroy the city. Then in verse 3, he says, Lord, you're searching for honesty. You struck your people, but they paid no attention. You crushed them, but they refused to be corrected. They were determined, their faces set like stone. They have refused to repent. You know, the day is again, what we just said earlier, Second Corinthians chapter 13, verse eight, can do nothing against the truth, only for the truth. We are in, when the word of God is our foundation, just like I, some Hebrew scholars believe that when the actual captivity of Babylon took place, and Jeremiah sat in the gates of the city and wept. And that's why the book of Lamentations is, is a record of what he said. We find that uh, that was a time when almost 10,000 Israelites were taken to Jerusalem, I mean, taken to Babylon in captivity. Most of them were destroyed along the way, raped, beaten, molested, destroyed, starved to death, so that only a handful made Babylon. But during that time, some scholars believe that Ezra was also with them. Ezra was the prophet of God. And Ezra wrote, they believe he wrote the, book, the Psalm 119. You know what the Psalm 119 is all about? The sustaining power in every situation with what God has done and what he's promised with his word. Ezra said, I won't do a thing without connect, connecting and checking with what the word of God is. So the only source of our truth today is the word of God. That's why it's so fun when I talk to our missionaries. I talked to Fabian last night, him and Erica, and they said that uh, it's so amazing when they presented the gospel of grace and the teachings of grace. And he's probably said this to you also, but. He said that uh, on the island of uh, Chiloé, where he goes uh, periodically, about a week every month or so, he said that the, when he first preached, the men, the elders of the church came to him and he said, he said he thought they were going to stone him to death. <laughs> they said, you can't preach this message. This means people can just go out and live like the devil and there's no consequence. But he said, as he continued to preach and the same with in Cortico, Chile, 
And as within time, they came to him weeping, saying, we cannot believe that the word of God, the truth about the grace of God, is set is it means everything it is it is the gospel and every one of our missionaries around the world that's what they're preaching they're preaching and they're seeing souls saved saved people getting baptized lives transformed people fed homes helped uh, people are going to commit suicide in Pakistan almost 40 of them since the this this virus thing came on the bed. Almost 40 people almost committed suicide. But Anila went and brought them food and the gospel and brought them Urdu Bibles and prevented almost all of them from committing suicide because the hope was found in the word of God was what changed their lives. So I'm excited about this conference. I'm, you know, IAGM, the International Association of Grace Ministries, we have only begun to, uh, to begin to see what all of God can do. The work in Italy, the work in, in Israel, the work all over the world in South America, in the Far East, and in the Pacific, and all these different places. God is faithful in Africa to bring people to Jesus Christ, the truth that you cannot do anything to prevent it. You can't do anything to make it any less than the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. So I'm blessed to have to be on here today and just to be a part of this. And I just want to compliment again all the effort that's gone into this, the hard work people have put to make this happen. And may God richly bless you as we continue in these days to see Jesus Christ come in and transform people's lives. God bless. Thanks, Dr. Lewis. Um, by the way, what we're hoping to do is uh, Tre Trevor Robinson's up next from Slovakia, and we're gonna. What we want to do is hopefully, Dr. Lewis. I don't. Again, I. You know, if you guys can come back at three twenty our time, that would be three, four, five, six twenty your time. Um, you. What we'd like to do is open it up for questions. So write down questions for Dr. Lewis. I do have a quick question for you, Dr. Lewis. For those. Uh, not here necessarily in this audience, but that might be out listening uh, perchance to this uh, today. What, um, who would be the one or what group or what person would be the one to, that you would say, come, come look at, look at the IAGM, come be a part, come, who would that be out there that you would want to kind of invite to look at the IAGM and, and what we have here? Okay, <clears throat> well, you can go to the website. The website has been updated. It's constantly being updated. It has a list. It shows all the missionaries. It has a brief uh, rundown of each one. There's, as Pastor Jim had said earlier, there's a new PayPal button also there. You can donate to support whoever you'd like. There's a uh, uh, down uh, bar that you can click on and shows which ones are available. But uh, the thing is, is if you have any questions and you want to ask any questions, it would be best at the present, because within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be updating our, uh, our connections with, uh, you can actually go through uh, iagm.org, and that's there. If you do that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the uh, web, one of the communication uh, contacts there, uh, or you can go D Lewis, D L E W I S, at IEGM.org. Either one of those, uh, you can, you can, I'll be able to speak to you, do whatever you would like to, you need any questions answered, whatever. And then we're going to have, uh, in the future, we'll have people that you can contact also. But uh, through the website is a very important way to do that. And those two, uh, those two things. So www.iagm.org is the website. And then uh, iagm.org is the, uh, that's uh, one of the, uh, Perfect. yeah, and, but and D Lewis at iagm.org. You can, I, I'll, I get that all the time and I can answer any of your questions, but 
really love to hear from anybody that's interested. This is a uh, 501c3 uh, a corporation based out of Washington, doing business here now in Florida and New York. And we're, <clears throat> we're just uh, doing whatever we can to uh, promote the gospel.